Hey everybody, note the disclaimer. Also remember that the people who supported me on Patreon got to see preview images, work in progress shots, and high resolution images of the completed figure. If you want to join them, the link is below. But before we get this video properly started, do you guys remember when I made the comparison video between my, my first Infinite and the official Infinite and wanted everybody to judge which was better? Well, some people actually chose Tomy's pitiable efforts as superior. So, let's just say I might have taken that a tiny bit personally. So now, let's see who the true master of infinite is. Alright, so this figure may be commissioned for Sonic Boom 6641, but keep in mind that this is perhaps one of the most personal challenges that I've ever taken. Because you see, I really couldn't stand the fact that some people thought that Tomy's infinite figure was better than mine. And I realized that the flaw of that was because mine had to accommodate a removable mask gimmick, which meant losing a little bit of accuracy in his sculpt. Well, when Sonic Boom wanted me to make him an infinite that didn't need the removable mask gimmick, I saw my opportunity to, to unleash my true power and show what I could really do. Funnily enough, he didn't actually want Infinite at first. He sent me two Sonic figures so that I could customize them into Mighty and Ray. But after I finished Mighty, he changed his mind and decided that instead of Ray, he wanted me to make an Infinite figure. So the base figure is going to be that second Sonic figure that he sent me. Um, of course, I did find in my fodder bin one last pair of Free Rider's Sonic feet, which are the best shape to make into Infinite shoes. Uh, aside from that, the rest of the base figure really would be almost entirely Sonic. So let's start with the most important part, the head. Whenever I made Infinite before, I had to use the Werehog's face because it resembled Infinite's look the best, and I had to make the ears and hair out of more flexible material so that I could take the mask on and off. But this time, since I only need to worry about Infinite wearing his mask, I just needed to cut the spines off and sculpt the mask on top of the head. So the only compromise to the design is that since there's actually a face underneath there, the mask actually has to be a little bit wider, which is what would actually happen. The Tomy figure's head is way too small. It makes Infinite look like if he took his mask off, he'd be a freaking pinhead. So um, the important part here is that since I don't have to worry about taking the mask off, I can actually sculpt the hair. This is something that I really wouldn't have been able to do while also accommodating a removable mask gimmick. So, um, so here it is, uh, how it comes out over the top of his mask a little bit. Um, I, I started by just twisting a whole bunch of little tubes of epoxy sculpt with a tip at the end to be the point of his dreadlocks, and then uh, attaching them to the back of his head one at a time. Um, just This is where I actually referenced the official toy. Uh, he has 14 hair points back there, so there's actually 14 little tubes of epoxy which make the dew. And um, I had to spread them apart in just the right pattern and actually make sure that none of this slumped over while it hardened. And... Uh, the end result is a head that looks a heck of a lot more like Infinite's than my original one did with just the craft foam hair. I maintain that the craft foam was necessary to accommodate the gimmick, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to make the mask removable, at least not with my materials, but since I don't have to worry about it, this is what I can actually do. A very important feature of Infinite's torso is the Phantom Ruby, which sticks out of his chest like a three-sided pyramid. The official toy ha just has this kind of stuck on there as if it's a belly patch or a fur pattern. I maintain that this is because they were interpreting one of the original concept drawings where the angle that it was drawn at didn't really show that it stuck out very far. So, um, you know, it didn't match the in-game model. And I also made the tail. It's an aluminum core because it's very big, and if I tried to make it completely out of sculpt, it would just, like, lose its shape before it had a chance to harden. And then sculpt it over uh, to his actually very large jackal tail. Infinite has a very big tail when you really get down to it. Um, and an important thing this time was uh, Infinite's little collar thing. Uh, when I made the Infinite with the removable mask, the collar didn't really come to the front of it, 
because I didn't want it to clash with the mask and make it fall off. But since this time the mask doesn't have to come off, I'm able to make the collar to go all the way around his neck. It's made out of craft foam with a hole cut into it for the uh, neck peg to go through, of course. And um, it actually replicates the look from the video game. I don't know whether this is his natural fur or if he's just wearing a raggedy scarf, but... It's just the basic pattern of Infinite having uh, this fur collar that comes out around his shoulders. Uh, the gloves are very simple. I just had to put that strap on the back of them. And you'll note that the right hand is from a Tails figure. This is so that he can have a gesticulating hand because he often gesticulates in the, in the video game. And him having two closed fists all the time just didn't seem right for the character. And the shoes I am particularly proud of. Uh, since I'm going all the way with making this a super accurate infinite sculpt, I made sure that all the points uh, matched the shape of the shoe from the video game. And when I painted them, I even remembered to make the, the soles of his shoes red. Um, because apparently when I left them all silver for my original infinite, some people took contention with the inaccuracy in the colors. So these are all the parts. Let's put infinite back together again. And there he is. Infinite! Haha, <laughs> the pain persists, I can't resist. I really do think that this is one of my best figures so far this year. Um, so, Infinite in his, uh, is, is fully a, still a Jazzwares figure with all the points of articulation, except for the waist. The tail kind of gets in the way, so you can't really turn the waist, but everything else still works, so, you know, there's, a uh, universal, uh, hips and shoulders, uh, elbows and knees. Wrists, ankles, his head turns, you know, it's it's a lot of articulation. And since I gave him a right hand that has a gesture, he can actually point menacingly and do stuff from the games. Like, he can shoot ruby lasers and all that stuff. So, uh, comparing him to my original Infinite, when he's not wearing the mask, uh, you can see that the figures still have pretty similar physiques, although you can see where I made some improvements in proportions and, uh, of course, uh, fixes to the colors. I do admit I did take some reference from the official figure to get that. Um, and here he is with the mask uh, compared to the original mask. You can see how it's a little smaller and better shaped. And here he is compared to the official Tomy figure with its dull gray paint and weird messed up proportions and tiny feet. And from the back you can see how the hair actually uh, has the proper number of points. And I think my hair actually does a better job of replicating the 3D model than the official figure. So take that! So, that was my best uh, shot at making an infinite figure. Let me know if you think that I finally, definitively beat Tomy this time. And we'll see you next time. This is Waking Answer 2001, signing off.